Hey. Mike Scott Plumbing. If water runs through it, we do it. I love vacations, but it's good to come home. Um, is the pool overflowing? We don't have a pool. And even if we did, it wouldn't be on the second floor. Oh. I told you before we left to turn off the water main. I thought you said take down the weather vane. We don't have one of those either. Yeah, I was wondering why you said that. It does make more sense now. Okay, genius. Don't just cut the main water off. Okay, I'll get the chainsaw. Wait, what? No! What do we do when there's a plumbing issue? Oh, I got this one. I'll be right back. I said no chainsaw. Shut the water off and call Mike Scott Plumbing. Uh, of course. I definitely was not going for the blowtorch. Uh-huh. The number should be etched in your memory, but just in case. 866-314-4443. Okay, got it. 866-314-4443. On next week's episode of What Not To Do. Really? A mariachi band? Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. There was a, a story the other day um, in the news. There was a baby in the in the story, a photograph of a baby, and the baby had sores all over her head, remember? And she had chicken yeah, pox, right? I do. She had chicken pox, and the mother was so upset because she listened to people who said, don't vaccinate. Vaccinations are dangerous. And now she's regretting listening to them. And uh, hopefully the baby did okay. We, I mean, I went through chicken pox when I was a kid. And um, but we, you know, but that was a million years ago. And I don't even know if they had chicken pox vaccines back then. Chelsea Walton is in the studio. Chelsea is the guest of Lauren Debick. Lauren is the manager in, of marketing communications at Ocala Health. And hello, Lauren. How are you? Good. How are you? Always good to see you. You too. And uh, Chelsea, you are an advanced registered nurse practitioner of urgent care at family care specialists in Bellevue. Correct. I used to live yes. in Bellevue. In fact, my son went all through school in Bellevue. Really? Elementary, middle, middle and high. high. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So I must have been there a long time. <laughs> you were. <laughs> Just a few years. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we're talking today about the importance of immunizations, not only for children, but also for adults, correct? Right. Yes, sir. So how are you, first of all? Good. How are you Lauren, guys? Lauren, how are you? I'm doing well. Doing you, well. You're not into the Poke Go thing or Pokemon Go thing? No, no I'm not. Not yet, anyway. Not, not yet. <laughs> Are you tempted? No. Not at all. No, I've seen my brother play it. I'm I'm good. How old oh. is your brother? He is 26. Oh, there really? Oh, really? Okay. So, <laughs> well, we saw an old guy out here, like Robin said, with a Pikachu hat. Yeah. I couldn't have even Pikachu told you that's what it was called, on. but she knew. But. Yeah, he was out there with the Pokemon Is there an immunization for this thing? Is there an immunization <laughs> for Pokemon Go fever? I think we need to contact CDC about it. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get in contact and let them know. Uh, I, I hope you don't mind me asking probably one of the most rudimentary questions okay. yeah, there please. is. But what is a vaccination? What is it actually? So a vaccination is a basically a drug that is administered typically through um, an injection. We call it shot basically uh -huh. but we like using the term injection and um it is and typically inactivated so it's a dead virus for the most part most vaccines except for probably three or four um, are all the dead and in inactivated viruses um, that we um, inject under your skin and what happens is your body's immune system decides oh wow um, we're getting this dead virus in our body let's build an immune immunity against whatever virus we just got so it builds up an immunity to that virus that's dead so it's not going to make you sick or anything um and so if you are exposed to the live virus then your body's immune system already has it covered has already been exposed to it knows wow. what to do in order to combat that virus isn't it amazing it's amazing not only figured this out but figured out how to kill a virus exactly how do yes. you know i mean is it lying on its back how do you uh, <laughs> it, well typically so viruses to get a little scientific has have a couple little um we'll call them like flags hanging off of them basically flags? bacteria are the same way okay. that's how antibiotics work as well we'll call them flags okay to be less scientific like little antennas uh, or something? basically yeah okay, okay um little things saying hey this is what i am and our cells are awesome our immune cells are awesome and are able to recognize that this isn't a normal human cell and decide oh hey let's take a look at this they 
wrap themselves around this weird virus that they've never seen before and decide, okay, this definitely isn't normal. So then they build immunity against it. Isn't that, it's, just amazing. it's really awesome. Hey, it's amazing the body yeah. that God made for us to live in, right? Yes. And it's amazing that, that people figured out how to do this. Exactly. I totally agree 100%. All right. And the, how, how do you know the different ages? Because that always impresses me because right. children are different ages in school and they have to have oh, yeah, yeah. certain vaccines at certain ages. How do you Definitely. know? So there is awesome resources online. The CDC has um, the most up-to-date and accurate um, resources in regards to what ages you need to get what vaccines. Um, typically, um, we go off of what we call the CDC's immunization schedule, which is uh, proven, uh, very powerful, awesome schedule that over time the CDC has created in order to find out what child should get what vaccine at what age. Mm -hmm. And so there's about 13 or so vaccines that children will get um, throughout their childhood, childhood. And so from two months, four months, six months, eight months, 10 months, through all the months, and then it goes from one year, two year, three year, four year, um, what happens is the CDC underneath each age group gives you what immunization that child needs. Um, and so your provider, your pediatrician, the health department all has the access to what um, immunization your children need at what age and what time. Um, of course, there's requirements in order to get into school for certain things. And so you want to make sure you get all of them in a timely manner so that you can have them before you start school. So if you were th right now, school starts what next Wednesday in mm -hmm. Marion County? Yes. And the children need to have been vaccinated already or is it too Typically, late, too yes. Late? There are a few exceptions. Um, there are the two major, the only two exceptions that are permanent is a permanent health disparity that the child absolutely cannot receive a vaccine. And then there's also a religion component to that. So the parent can decide it's against my religion to have my child vaccinated. Really? They will not be vaccinated. And they have to sign a waiver saying that they agree to the terms of the school policy and that they are agreeing that they're not abiding by that policy and okay. that if there's if something happens to them that they're not liable. Now, how about the immigrants that come into this country? They want to take up residency. They're still working to get uh, naturalized to be a mm -hmm. citizen. Are all of their children and them required to just take all of the vaccines from our, you know, from e even if they're like 10 years old? Don't we have to give them the vaccines that they should have had when they were yet little? Right. So it depends. If they have record that they did receive those vaccines, then we can go kind of figure out, okay, the CDC is awesome in knowing how uh, other countries' vaccines compare to our vaccine. So let's say they got one vaccine and our vaccine is way more powerful and they want them to get this vaccine instead. So they'll re-immunize re with our Un United States vaccine. Um, and then for other vaccines though, um, they don't have to do that. So if they've already been immunized, immunized, but if they haven't been immunized at all, then yes, we start from scratch and we start from pretending they're AKA a newborn and we'll re-vaccinate them or vaccinate them initially with every single vaccine oh, that they've good. missed. Good. What? Uh, why are some vaccines good once you get them and you're good for the whole life and others you have to get once a year? So th that is actually really interesting. The CDC, obviously they're, always doing research, always creating safe and effective vaccines. They are always ma maintaining that the vaccines that they're giving are safe and effective. So while studying effect efficacy of these vaccines throughout the years, they've realized that some of these vaccines, mm, some of these people are getting it, like tetanus, for example. Um, some of these people who have, were vaccinated when they were 20 with a tetanus booster mm -hmm. will get tetanus again when they're 40 will get a rusty nail or something and then develop tetanus. But they're like, I thought they already had a tetanus vaccine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens is our immune system over time for s certain vaccines decides that, okay, we're, we haven't really been exposed to this for a while, so let's wear off a little bit on- Oh, really? If, right. So, and then they'll worry about other things that you're being exposed to more often in your immune system. So anyways, the tetanus is just a, a great example that tetanus booster shot, so it's basically just the tetanus um, shot over again, well, is recommended every 10 years. So if you get it when you're 20, you need another do a booster shot when you're 30. I used to get one every time my hamster bit me. Or if you get some, every time. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> that was a kid. Yep. The hamster bit me. Yeah. Mommy, the hamster bit yes. me. Yes. Yeah, let's go get a tetanus shot. Uh, yep. Yeah. That's about, that sounds about right. Usually if you get a, a bite from a wild animal, I don't know about a hamster, but a wild animal. <laughs> was it that wild? The ER decides uh, whether or not you need another tetanus shot. All so. right. In, in your definition of a vaccine, is it's a, it's the dead virus. Okay. So Some. Most Oh, is vaccines. that, is that true? What's the chicken pox virus? Is so that the chicken pox, the flu, and the MMR are three that I know offhand that are live viruses. Oh, they're live. Yes. Measles, mumps, and rubella. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Oh, really? The MMR, the flu vaccine. The flu vaccine has a live version. We typically don't use it. Most people get the inactivated oh. um, flu vaccine. The kids that get the flu mist in their nose, at, mm -hmm. um, sometimes schools administer it, but the flu mist that goes in the nose, um, that is a live virus. Really? So, so do you risk getting the disease? So you are, we are administering the flu virus to you if it's the live virus, but what happens is it's a weakened strain and okay. the kids typically- How do they do that? How do they weaken them? I don't, How do they these know These researchers are awesome. Right? Let me just you're tell looking, you. You're looking at a microscope. Yes, yeah, a microscope. Yeah, he yep. looks weak to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I'm sure they have some tests, but, but definitely it's typically the weakened version through the flu mist and you- can get the flu people all the time are said oh i got the flu after i got the vaccine so i'm not going to get it anymore but what happens is the flu vaccine that the cdc puts out every year covers the top few strains from the previous year so there's a lot of them right like there's roaches right exactly there's a ton and so what happens is there's a ton of different strains of flu so it covers the top few strains we'll say the top three strains from the previous year so the next year if a new strain develops and you get the flu that is the different strain that you weren't covered for typically what happens is your immune system can still fight the flu that you got even if it's a different strain so you will get less sick than you would be if you hadn't received so you just it get at a little, all. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so, so here's my question, and I don't know if this applies to everyone, but let's use chickenpox specifically. Okay. Because that little baby was in the news. Did you just happen to see this photograph of the little baby? I saw. I don't know if it was the chicken. I've seen. A, there's a. I mean, there. If you go online, there's a ton of pictures of unvaccinated. During the break, I'll bring up the picture. Okay. And, and perfect. Show, show yeah. You. And but but I'm assuming the baby will be okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that baby got the chicken pox because the vaccine was never administered the mm -hmm. mother was regretting that and that's what the story was about okay but is the baby now protected from the chicken pox now that she was exposed to the to the virus so it, it depends on which disease you're talking about chicken pox in particular um yes and chicken pox yes but that doesn't mean later on you won't get the shingles, which is a related. I want to ask you about that too. Yeah. yeah. So it's related. So those are pretty much extremely similar, almost the same virus. And what happens is people, they're like, oh, I got the chicken pox. I won't get the shingles. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you have to, it's a completely separate vaccine. Who so. names these things, by the way? The first time I heard, I saw shingles, I said, what does the person oh look like? The roof of a house? We I know. I felt like I was studying Greek for a while when I was in nursing school. So. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren, you picked a really good spokesperson for this topic. I mean, my, my goodness, Chelsea, you know your stuff. Good, good. I'm All glad. Right, so let's take a little break and uh, we'll be right back. If you have any questions, you are welcome to call. The number is 622-9622. And of course, we'll give out uh, the phone number at Ocala Health and uh, also at the Urgent Care at Urgent, what is it called? It's a family care practice urgent care. and uh, also urgent care okay. in Bellevue. Uh, so we'll be right back with uh, Chelsea and Lauren on the other side of the break. We'll do that break right now. is brought to you by myfwc.com safe boating is no accident sunshine and some clouds on this thursday with a thunderstorm around during the afternoon and evening hours high 88 to 92 and partly cloudy later thursday night though 73 to 77 on friday more clouds and sun with a thunderstorm around especially in the afternoon the high 87 to 91 saturday partly sunny watch out for an afternoon thunderstorm high 87 to 91 from the florida weather center i'm joe lundberg Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. 
Yeah, I'm that drip coming down from the corner of the room. But where did I come from? I'll never tell. Bone Dry Roofing can and will fix it right the first time using quality materials and will deal honestly and fairly with you, period. You can find Bone Dry Roofing on their website, Bone Dry Roofing, LLC.com, and Facebook at Bone Dry Roofing, LLC. Do it right before your roof needs a tarp to keep the elements out. Bone Dry Roofing stands behind their work to help make your home safe and secure, plus they have financing available. Remember, if you're not bone dry, then you're all wet. You can't put it off any longer. It's time to replace your home's AC system. The answer is asolvesitall.com and an exceptionally efficient AC system. Let the pros at A show you how you can save on energy monthly and give your family added comfort. The great thing is that asolvesitall.com is on call 7 to 7, 7 days a week at no extra charge. For a limited time, mention WOCA and get a special discount. Call 877-765-4ACE or asolvesitall.com. FlySanford.com, Orlando Sanford International Airport. We are SFB. Simpler, faster, better. Simpler with an easy to navigate compact airport design. You won't need your running shoes. Faster with quick processing times from parking to plane in minutes. Better with more nonstop flights to your favorite places. And new destinations are being added all the time. For enjoyable travel, come to Orlando Sanford International Airport. We are SFB. Simpler, faster, better. Before you fly, FlySanford.com. W-O-C-A. <laughs> when it really counts, depend on the source for the latest weather updates, keeping you ahead of the storm. 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. All right, 20 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I could not find that picture that I was talking about before we went to the break. So it just it was a story, and it wasn't that long ago. Chelsea Walton is in the studio. She's from, help me with this, Urgent Care at Family Care? So I'm a family nurse practitioner at Family Care Specialist in Bellevue, and okay. then we also have an urgent care um, portion of our clinic. Okay, and you're right on 441? There is a Bellevue location on 441. We are right off of 441. I think it's 110th Street. Oh, right near Publix? Mm -hmm. Walgreens. Walgreens. There's a Walgreens on the corner. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. over, yeah. over there. I think there's a bank there, too. And uh, Lauren Debick is in the studio. Lauren is with Ocala Health. And uh, this this is... I love this conversation. This comes up all the time. During the break, we mentioned that we've had guests on who, mm -hmm. who equated... Um, vaccines with autism. Can you talk on that just a little yeah, bit? Yeah, of course. I know you did it off the air, but... Yeah. Do it <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, in particular, there's a lot of concern in the general public um, about relating vaccines to autism, that vaccines cause autism. Um, a lot of the reference every reference of that argument goes back to one researcher, one research mm. um, study that was done by a doctor who was being funded, his research was being funded by a vaccine company that could use his research in order to sell more of their vaccines. Basically, there's a MMR vaccine, the measles, mumps, rubella. It's a combination vaccine. So what his company was selling, or the company that was funding him was selling, was a separated measles, mumps, rubella. So they wanted to sell each of those vaccines separately. Because that's one of the things they argue is that the, the, the children are getting the vaccines too close to one another. Okay. I don't know. If, well, what's your response so to that? So I have heard of certain um, parents requesting that the vaccinations be um, spread out. Spread out. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, that the CDC has done, I mean, they're nonstop doing research. The CDC, FDA, um, and it's not just our country. Other countries are doing this research. And every single research study is showing that these recommend, recommended immunization schedules are right on target. Mm. The, these kids need these because when they're young, when they're infants, they're not protected against any of these things. And that's when they're most vulnerable to these diseases. So Okay. Do we do have a phone call? If you'll oh, awesome. put, put your headsets on, will you be right. able to uh, hear the caller? And wait for Lauren. Can you hear me, Lauren? I can. And Chelsea, can you hear me? Not really? Kind of, yeah. Okay, turn it up, because if you can't hear me, you won't be able to hear the oh, caller. Oh, I hear you now. <laughs> now. Now you hear me. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Uh, when my sister and I were in grade school, um, basically the entire first and second grade got uh, measles and chicken pox pretty much back to back. Uh, we were out of school for about two months. Uh, homework was going home, homework assignments were going back to school. 
Um, Chickenpox was basically uh, a nuisance. Right. The measles was serious. I mean, my parents were planning on our funeral. Uh, the fever got very, very high. Uh, so that's my comment on, on measles wow. and, and chicken pox. Well, I didn't realize that measles uh, were that serious. Yeah, they're really, really bad. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, have a good, have a good day, all. Thank good call. Thank so, you. So we didn't eradicate these diseases. We just keep them at bay with these vaccines. Right. So there are some diseases through vaccines that we have eradicated. For example, smallpox. It does not exist in our country at all, really? except for in a laboratory. Yes, it's in a little container. I think it's in Atlanta. I, I know there's one in Atlanta. There might be one in another lab somewhere else. Uh, but and it's in the CDC laboratory over there. Um, but that's been completely what eradicated. Does it look like? You know, it probably has a flag on it somewhere, you know, we were talking about earlier, but yeah. no. Uh, it's <laughs> tiny. Ob- it's it probably in a test tube somewhere. Pox, I'm sure. P-O-X, does that mean something? Um, well, it's a, one of the symptoms that you get, kind of like oh, you, the visual. like pock marks. Mm-hmm, yep. Is that what that means, pox? Yeah. Okay. All right, and chicken, does, is, there any, is there any reason for calling it chicken pox? I have no idea. Uh, I'm sure that's, I'm asking, I'm sure that's folklore from like, not like really folklore, but I'm oh, sure okay. there's some symptom that mimics. Somebody s- must have believed it came from the chickens. Yeah. Maybe. The, the kids, Actually, that's probably The kids right are outside online. playing with the chickens. The next thing you know, he's got pox. Look what you got. Oh chicken pox. Yeah. Maybe. All right. All right. We'll I see. I don't know. I'm just making it up. So, I'll have to look that up. So what is the connection between shingles and chicken pox? Um, so shingles and chicken pox, like I was mentioning earlier, are pretty much one and the same um, in terms of what causes them. Um, it's just, I would, I don't want to say this incorrectly, but basically it's different in what happens when you get the, when the virus is activated in your body. Okay. Um, there's two separate vaccines. One's um, for shingle, there's zoster and the varicella is for the chicken pox, zoster is for shingles. Um, so it's a little bit different, but we were pretty much in healthcare, a lot of people put them together for a lot of things. We'll say. So when you're an adult and you feel you're developing shingles and then the doctor diagnoses it, can you get a shot right then or is it too late? You have so to get it before. The the recommendation from CDC says that if you have if you have had shingles in the past, 100% get a vaccine. Like if next time you go to the doctor, get a vaccine. I'm not 100% positive on if you have active shingles, whether it's appropriate for you to have a vaccine at that exact okay, time. Okay. I know that you'll get treatment for it, just supportive therapy, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, possibly antiviral medication while you're while you're going through the shingles outbreak, but um, once you heal from that 100, percent you need to get a shingles vaccine if you haven't already had one. Sometimes, in some cases, two shingles vaccines are required for some people. Oh wow! Do we yeah. still give polio vaccines? Yes, we do. Yes, and polio is another really, really dangerous, deadly disease. Um, but people don't realize that even though our country doesn't have it as very very rarely is a polio case reported i'm sure um but this is because our country we don't have it because our kids are vaccinated appropriately whereas other countries don't get the polio vaccine that that disease is still really common and that kind of plays into robin's question about um people coming into the country right if you have a child and you've said no i don't want a vaccine and now that child is with a child who has polio Mm -hmm. you i mean not to scare anybody but that that could happen a very high risk of well, getting it. I, I think us older people have a mark on our... I have a mark on yeah, my... Yeah, my mom has I that. Yeah. Your mom? Yes, okay. Yes, but you yeah, younger mom. folks don't have this. Right. And that that's the polio vaccine, right? Um, or what so was that? Uh, yeah, so that... I'm not 100% sure what combination that was, but it was a combination vaccine back... I know definitely in the 50s, mm-hmm. maybe the 40s as well. I know definitely in the 50s. And um, it was a combination vaccine. And it was... I'm pretty sure it was just the way that it was administered that just left that left scar. left a big mark on you. Yeah, and I actually have a really close friend who's from Venezuela. And she lives in America now. She, she's gone through everything, very legal and everything. So, But she has the same scar, and she's my age. So... So over there, oh, they're see. still giving that combination, whatever it is, of the that vaccine. Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. yeah. I'm looking at Robin's arm. Yeah. Yours is yours is very small. 
Yeah, well, it's mine was, still there. Mine was big. You could, you could have. Yeah. I could, I could have died in the fire as long as you saw that part. Oh, that's Larry. Yeah. <laughs> mine looked a, a unique. That was your identifier. Yeah, huh? I think, I think it's changed by now. Uh, well, you certainly know your stuff. Well, thank you very my, much. My goodness. Uh, so, the bottom line is that vaccines are safe. They're very your, important. Your yeah. and, and important. Very safe, very important. They're proven. Um, and they're, I mean, it's preventative. These these vaccines are for, to prevent diseases from occurring. And why, you know, why wouldn't you want that? Why wouldn't you? Especially when you know that they could kill you or keep you crippled. And that they're safe. Like we mentioned earlier, they're I know, safe. I, I know a know? lady who had polio when she was younger and she still right. walks with a limp. Oh yeah. We, we actually, yeah. I've worked in the villages and we had a ton of patients with a ton of musculoskeletal. Sh- they either had, you know, one leg a little bit longer than the other, or, mm. you know, one side was weaker than the other, one side was stronger. And they all have said, I had polio as a child. So. Uh, and, and since you're a, a nurse seconds. practitioner, mm. people can come to you as their general practitioner yep. for anything? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. they can they can come see me Lauren. as their primary care provider. Good. <laughs> 10 seconds, Lauren. Do you Our, want to give ooh, a phone sorry. number? <laughs> yes, the phone number is 1-800-530-1188. And the website for locations and to make an appointment is ocalahealthfcs.com. Okay, uh, Lauren Debick and Chelsea Walton, you ladies are awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Right, we'll be right back. Stabbed an American woman to death and injured five others. He fled the scene, but he was captured and tasered just six minutes later by police. He's now in custody, and they're hoping to find out what happened. Fox's Benjamin Hall.